Welcome to Leading with Artivism. Leading with Artivism is a live monthly interview series created and curated by Poet Gold in collaboration with Arts Mid-Hudson featuring a diverse mix of artivists, artist activists who have taken up the charge through their art to highlight social issues. We invite you to ask questions and get an inside look at the hearts and minds of these courageous creatives. Welcome, everybody, to Leading with Artivism, another great episode. We're here today with uh, Daniel Vajegas, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about Daniel. I'm your host, Poet Gold. Uh, Daniel Vajegas seeks to uh, alleviate, alleviate ignorance by tackling various issues, including but not limited to race, gender, religion, politics, history, social injustice, poverty, segregation. Having been contracted by the 21st Century Grant under the Obama administration, he and his group members for four years have been teaching a creative enhancement workshop where students and teachers alike integrated both breathing and movement techniques with writing and music. With captivating hip hop, soul, Latin and Caribbean music in rhyme, rap and poetry, he brings an innovative and freestyle sound while occasionally break dancing his skills into his endeavors wherever he goes, as he is passionately talks about ways to think and move geometrically. With insights gained from his own personal journey, he shares his lessons learned freely with his audience. So what I like to do is first say hello to Daniel, and then we're gonna bring up a video. Can we get Daniel on the screen. Hey, Danny, how you doing? Buenas to el mundo, que tal? How you doing, Golda? Glad I, to be here, like always. Yeah, no, it's it's always great to see you. You know, I must admit, I just saw you last night, and we'll talk <laughs> yeah. about we'll talk about that, you know, as well. But um, do you want to give us a little intro into this video that's coming up, or you just want to just go straight to the video? Yeah, uh, what it, the video is the warrior poem with me in the studio. Yes, I believe. Okay. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's it was very interesting. Um. I think I I happened to just get home. And I was feeling a little depressed. I was feeling like like something unrest, unrest, restlessness in my body. And I, and I just called up um, the Quana. I was like, Quana, which is the producer. I was like, do you have anybody booked for tonight? He said, no. I was like, can you open up an hour session for me? I just want to go in and freestyle. Just record whatever I say and let's make it happen. He's like, yeah, let's do it. So I went over there. He, could, he put his camera on. Um, he's, he just recorded and boom, and the, and the poem just came right out. Wow. I mean, you, you're phenomenal off the dome. You know, I've witnessed it. Um, you're, you're a genius in that category. But let's just watch the video. Cool. I'm in a place where sometimes it gets a little hard to express, but I've learned that if you speak from inside of your chest, I mean the heartbeat, you could always keep the rhythm going. Never would I stop showing myself just like the stars be So I turn inside out or outside in So I can rock para que diga lo que siento So you can see what I'm saying Or show, should I say you should feel what I'm saying When I'm saying what I'm feeling I keep going through my veins I can feel my ancestors The energy that keeps me moving Como el tambor, como tum ka 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 tum tu boom ka tu tum I'm a warrior Yes, I'm a warrior You are a warrior so you can never stop you have to keep pushing to the limits or make the limits be your reason that you keep going even if you hit your head on the universe or should I say become the universe and everything begins to spin itself round. Siga lo que digo, siga lo que siento como es todo para que sientes se, 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 se. Ticka, ticka, one, ticka, 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 one, two. On the mic of the microphone, check lo que sepa, lo que digo. Cuando tengo para dice lo que vengo, como fuera un testigo pa' que siente de carne. Digo lo que sepa, para sepa, can you rock it on the microphone? I rock it each way, mira yo. Sometimes I gotta let myself go so I can find the real essence of who I am. And if it means sometimes being my own man, then I gotta learn to stand straight and remember that my mom tried her best. So I have to eat sus arroz con gandules como comía todo cuando era niñez o en mi niñez cuando era niño when I was young. But now I'm older and I've learned all my lessons. And I've learned that if we could support each other as a community, then we will rise to be ourselves once again, like we were back in time. Should I go back in time or forward in time? Pero si te voy a decir esto, I'm going to tell you this. That if you believe in yourself and never quit on yourself, 
You will always be, and you will always be remembered as a warrior. I see Somos. Yes, you'll always be remembered as a warrior. Um, there's so much. There's so much in that, Danny. Let me let me first start by saying this: you have um, an ability that that not many um, artists have, and that you know culturally, and that is to seamlessly weave in linguistically your your Latin culture, you know, into Western culture, you know, and just blend that all together. Have you always been able to do that? Or was it something that you had to work on or was it just naturally organic for you? Um, I would say my first language is Spanish. So that's what I first uh, started um, speaking, right? For, uh, and my, and my, as a child, you know, my grandmother spoke to me in Spanish. My mother spoke to me in Spanish. Um, so Spanish was my primary language. But then I went to school and I learned English. And interestingly enough, my first re my first a uh, rap song, because that was the first thing I ever wrote, which was inspired by Most Deaf, mm. was in English. So I was introduced to writing and freestyling in English. Um, and then it wasn't until I was like, you know, I should start doing this in Spanish. You know, let's see if, it, if, it, if I can do it as well. So I started rhyming in Spanish. And then what happened was I would write a whole rhyme in Spanish. And then when I would freestyle, my mind would go different places and it was hard to focus it. So hmm. I started to throw Spanish words in there and it's just like, it just, it started going back and forth from one language to another while I was mm -hmm. trying to get my point across. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I've, I've seen you live, um, you know, at the Newburgh's open mic and at other places. And I've always been amazed how fluid, you know, that, that ability is for you. And outside of, I mean, you know, everyone watching just witnessed that the fact that you just did warrior off the dome. Yeah. You know, I was I was never an off the dome artist. You know, I was like, you know, I'm tripping off over my words. I, I have to think too much, you know. And so I always admire people who are able just to kind of spit it right off the dome because that's that's a, an artistic, you know, gift in itself. Um, someone has a question. Is, is there a frequency in music that touches the soul? Oh, wow. That's such a great question. I'm, I'm, I'm about to speak a little bit on the universe. Okay, so, great. Um, yeah, you know, there is a frequency. Uh, in fact, every human being has a frequency, a signature that the universe knows you by. So frequency, right, it's like the radio waves that when we turn and we're trying to tap into the radio, we're mm -hmm. looking for what frequency. And once we get the right frequency, we can hear clearer what right. the radio is playing. It's the same way with ourselves. When we're more in tune with our body and with ourselves, the universe has a frequency that we are dialed to. And then we end up, you know, delivering music or writings or so forth when we're tapped into that. Now it comes into music when we infuse that creativity and tap it into the frequency that music is already at. So, mm -hmm. the, you know, music has uh, different tones, right? Different vibrations. Um, and, we, and when we get like uh, melodic on like, you know, uh, the A, C, D, E, you know, all that, mm -hmm. uh, when we start getting melodic on it, we, we also have resonance. That the vibe that the body resonates too. So definitely, yeah. There's, I would say that's the frequency when you can figure out the frequency of your body that is in tune with the universe. You can figure out all that other stuff. Right. Absolutely. We we also call that chakra your colors. Yeah. Right, you right, know. Right. Yeah. 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 Your chakra, your, your colors, and that has your has your childhood and your upbringing. Um, I mean, we talked about that, that a little bit, but can you embellish on it? You know, in uh, inspire your journey. Yeah, so you know, I, I, I come from Colombia, so I'm first generation. My kids would be first generation um, uh, kids here in the United States. Mm -hmm. I am a citizenship, but I also have dual citizenship, so I'm also from Colombia, South America. Mm -hmm. um, so my childhood, you know, it was tough. You know, when I was when I was younger, I, I dealt with like at one point. Um, I think my dad was somewhere in Italy with me and my mother. And somebody grabbed me and started to run, mm. um, you know, and gladly I'm here because my father found me. Wow. I remember, you know, slightly that feeling of so much fear inside me. Yeah. And I guess you can say that throughout my experiences of developing as a man, um, 
I have had to find out the way of why I need to say what I feel uh, mm. in the most creative manner that I can do it because I'm also very conscious, so I never want to hurt anybody. Mm. And I understand words do hurt, so I try to be as conscious as I can on how creatively to fuse in, uh, a message without, like, you know, stepping on people's toes. And that's mm. very difficult at times, but I say because of what happened to me as a child and the fact that when I was young, in my mother's um, belly, the, the 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 umbilical cord was around my neck, so it was tough for me to even breathe. Hmm. So, like all these things, kind of build, you know, very tough um, as a child to have to get through stuff. But most of all, to find my voice and why it is so important for me to speak. And you know, with my grandmother, God bless her soul, she passed away a little while ago at 98. Um, she, she she introduced me to music. She would be, be the p person playing guitar um, in church, and I would drum with her in church, and I got into the music because of her. Okay. Um, you know, and that's kind of like my upbringing as a child into I, how I got into the spoken word, you can say. Oh, wow. wow. You know, and um, you uh, talk, talking about your grandmother, you know, your mother, uh, potential kidnapping. And, right. and, and But yet in that, your intention to have your voice, but at the same time, have that delicate balance of, of not intending to hurt anyone intentionally. Correct. You know, because because I have I have some uh, friends sometimes who say, you know, I don't I don't like the spoken word thing. Everybody's always complaining, you know, and just <laughs> just like regurgitating on people, you know. And they just like they're like, well, we like what you say in some of your friends, but overall, I just can't stand it, you know, <laughs> you know. Right. And, and because it is sometimes um, a, a confessional, you know, right. and, and and people are talking about their pain and 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 wanting that voice, um, but sometimes not consciously thinking about how to package that, right. You know how how do I how do I say what I want to say and and move the universe and move everyone forward? And I think that when you come to the table, um, you bring that to the table, and it's and it is deeply felt. And which brings me to your journey of of I don't know if this is where you started, but I know that I originally uh, met you through Rednecks poetry. Right, right. You right. know, let's let's talk about that journey a little bit. Tell the audience who Rednecks is, uh, former members, and you know. Yeah, so uh, Rednecks Poetry Squad is actually a uh, past tense, so it's R-E-A-D-N-E-X, which means next poets to be read about, read next, um, like like read or read a book. Um, and the, uh, it was a group of five members that started out from SUNY Orange. Uh, we all got together at an open mic, and uh, we, we ended up performing at the open mic and realized that there was something here much more than just doing an open mic, mm -hmm. you know, that we had something very magical here. Um, the group lasted for about almost 15 years, running yeah. strong, you know, touring the country, um, both in school and out school. Um, the group members was one was called Decora, DH, DJH20, Free Flowing, Latin Translator, and myself, uh, the five main members. Um, at that time, I had two different names. I started off as Cutsil Colombiano, uh, and then eventually went into uh, Col Jarabe del Sol, um, which I would say within the past five years I decided to go into my personal name as a solo artist um, you know but as the group rednecks um, we did a lot of a, a lot of amazing things you know when you're dealing with five different characters yeah you still be able to stay motivated because everyone has their own opinion mm -hmm. everyone has their own intuition uh, and their own feelings so we we, we, we were um, a very loving group yeah. You were, and that and that showed itself in your performances. I mean, I, I remember the first time I think I saw you guys. Um, I just fell in love with 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 you guys as a group because I had my past as an as an artist had been with groups before, and I know how hard that dynamic is and how challenging it can be. And so when you do see it, particularly five members, um, I think it was you had four 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 males and one one woman, right? One gal. Correct. Correct. Right. Yeah, and um, just when you guys. You know, you had the places where you were together and then you had the places where you were voicing your character yourself independently. And it was just it was magic, you know, to watch. I'm glad that you had that journey. We have a question uh, that popped in. What is your greatest achievement so far and why? My greatest achievement? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think the biggest achievement that I would call it an achievement was when we were able to get that grant. 
Um, and it wasn't us that got the grant. It was the school systems that brought us out that applied for the grant through what we were offering. And at that point, we were offering creative uh, writing en enhancement uh, a workshop that we toured the country with. And I say the biggest was, was to see the curriculum in place in these schools, but also see these kids transform in front of me. Mm. Like they just, when we got there, they were shy, timid, in, in their own little cliques. And we mm. would always open it up with the Be Different music video. Mm. Um, and they got to see right there the kids that we work with from home. And they would open up after that video, whatever we said, it was golden. They were with us. They, you know, if we told them to jump, they jumped. We told them to write, they wrote. Um, so that was, that. I would say that was one of my greatest achievements. Yeah. And, you know, as a, as a teaching artist, um, I, I happen to agree with you to watch uh, students, you know, or, you know, initially be a little shy or timid or introverted, you know, or I don't want to do this. <laughs> you know, why, why am I here? And then watch them transform on, over the journey, you know, with, with, with curriculum like that is uh, always very rewarding for not only the children, but also as, as the teaching artist that, that touches them. Um, right. So, so let's talk about your teaching artists. You know, are you, are you active in that? Are you planning? I think you're planning something in the near future. Yeah, so two things that I'm working on. One, uh, through Wickham Works here in Warwick, and an organization that's been working with uh, Dulce Esperanza, which are um, a group of Latino kids that go to the Pine Island District um, here in Orange County. And they brought me out last year was to, to introduce them to writing and movement. Because I, you know, I do, I, I kind of dabble in and out of the Tai Chi and the Qi Gong movement, breathing yoga. Um, so I, I, I get them into that and then writing right after just mm -hmm. so they're already flowing. Um, so they loved it so much. They hit me up again this summer because it's a summer program for about a month residency. And they're like, Daniel, I don't know what you did with these kids, what kind of magic you put, what kind of spell, but it was incredible to see you with them. We want you to come back and do it again. But this time, this, the theme is the human body. Mm. And I was like, yeah, of course. Um, I bring in the same idea and concept. We get them to move and get them to write about what they feel and how they feel when they're moving. Um, so that's one of the things in the works. And the other one is to get it to different schools and community centers. The same workshop I was doing with the Rednecks, but now I'm doing it with DJ H2O uh, okay. by myself. Okay. Uh, and, and I have curtailed it a little differently. There's, um, you know, a, a, you know, we added a component called the five elements of hip hop, where we break down the five elements of hip hop in the actual workshop. Okay. Um, but those are the two things that I'll say that I'm really working on when it comes to um, teaching. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, so, so I know you have that going on. Um, last night, I think they announced Park Sound Truth announced. I mean, Park Sound Music, excuse me announced doing something on the lawn in Newburgh. Are you are you involved in that at all? So, uh, yeah, me and uh, Sergio uh, Valentin from Park Sound Music, we've been working together. We actually been talking for about good five to seven years uh, in the process that I've been working on my solo album. We just, you know, we would walk, we would talk, we would kick it at his house, we would freestyle. And then finally I was like, listen, I'm getting better from how I've been feeling. I want to be more active. Let's start doing stuff. So he's like, okay, I want to, I want to bring an open mic back. Let's start doing open mics and, and see what we can do. So um, I'm, I'm kind of behind the scenes of that um, until further notice. Okay. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm kind of working just, just for the motivation and getting things going. But um, I don't know how involved I will be until the first one. Um, and we kind of see how the chemistry works. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I would say I'm behind the scenes at the moment. Okay. All right. So, so, well, last night you certainly wasn't behind the scenes. So let's, let's talk <laughs> about, let's talk about what you're doing at the warehouse, you know, passing on the torch there. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was beautiful. So I've been going to the Newburgh open mic with you for a very, very long time, right? The yeah. Thursday nights was my spot that I needed to be there no matter what. <laughs> Um, and we so, loved having you come through. Yeah, I, I loved it. It was cool. And, you know, you're such a great host. You're so warm and welcoming. So um, when uh, Sergio hit me up and he's like, yo, would you mind co-hosting with me with uh, doing this open mic? Gold is passing the torch. Would you uh, would you like to co-host with it? 
you know, and, and see how it goes. I was like, you know what? And I, and I'm going to be honest. And I told him I'm not a host. It's not what I do. Right. You know, right. I, I love to perform and I love to talk to people after about the performances they did. Mm-hmm. But I was like, you know, I did the, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I hosted the poetry slam that I'm hosting in Newburgh. Uh, we, hopefully we get it going every couple months. So he loved it. He's like, man, you're made for this. You're supposed to be a host. I was like, no, I'm not really a host. But I was like, because you're doing this, let's try it out. As yeah. long as you do it with me, because I'm not taking the lead for this. So, you know, it ended up taking his life of its own. And, you know, it was really cool bringing people up and having them perform and um, really feeling like people really got to share themselves yes. on that stage. Yes, yes. And there were a lot of people there. It was a, it was a full house, you know, and I walked yeah. into the pack, pack house. And so will you guys be doing it still the fourth Thursday of the month? Is that the plan? Uh, I think that's what he's looking to do. I got to okay. talk to him um, if it's going to stay the same uh, rhythm that you had going. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we did it the first time Wednesday uh, to, right. to work it out. Uh, so I don't know. He would be the one to speak to. But, okay. uh, you know, hopefully it is something that will continue on every month. Okay. So um, when you do is, let me ask you a question, is, is a different, what's the full title of it? Is different on, on YouTube at all? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's called uh, Rednecks Poetry Squad, Be Different. Be Different. That's be that. Different. Yeah, Be Different. Be Different. I should have I pulled out, uh, you know, your CDs and, and uh, be able to show folks, I got your CDs. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah that's, that, that's, that's, how, that's how back we go, right? Yeah, we absolutely. CDs. CDs. Yeah. yeah, we go back. We go back to the CDs. So, you know, you talked about this a little bit when you talked about the teaching artists um, and and just what your intention is in relationship to one finding their voice. Um, for you, what is artivism for you? Okay. Um, artivism to me is being in the process of another person's process. Right. Mm. So it means that mm. you are involved in their transition from wherever they were to what they're becoming and hopefully be able to guide them to where they're going so they could become okay. their own person and stand on their own, um, especially working with these kids. And now I'm going to be doing a, a once a month poetry classes in Newburgh um, where we're going to be doing th- prompt writing, um, you know, uh, for adults. Um, so the big part of that is to be able to say to people, listen, I know, first of all, we experienced some hard times. I know about that. Trust me. I know how hard it is to be in a place where your brain doesn't work and everything yeah. feels so heavy that you're not sure if you can move forward. Right. But when we can be amongst other people and then write down our thoughts and not judge them, right? then we can see ourselves um, and take a step back and go, okay, wow, I have more to offer. And I've been through quite a few things to say that, hey, I have something to say. And okay. I and I think that when you can reach people at that level, you are doing that artivism because you're bringing the art and the activism of, of you know, which eventually really brings the social change and the revolution we speak about, right? Of, right, of what right. people go through because of oppression. Um Everywhere in history, arts has always been in that background. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it wasn't, I don't think we would have made it. Because, you know, even like Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King, if he didn't speak and write the way he wrote, that right. was art in its existence Absolutely. to its point. You know, he was a talented poet, a writer, yes. and an incredible preacher. Yes. Um, and those words still magnify today when people are studying and they go, Oh, the I have a dream speech. Wow, how powerful. And that's only some of the stuff he said, right? That's what right, that's what right. we take to. Um, so I think that's when artivism becomes its truth. absolutely. You know, I always say an artivism is the activist of the heart. We activate the yeah. heart. Yeah. You know, we activate the heart. And so I know that we're we're trying to find find that find the video. Uh, for you because I'd, I'd love people to see it but if not what we'll do is we'll wind up putting it up on the page um okay. so that people can just you know just a little nostalgia yeah so yeah that, so, that, so that people know you know from whence from whence you come so um what's what's on the horizon you know we have other things i know we talked about the the uh the space that safe harbor the partnership 
that's going to be taking place in Newburgh with that, uh, the warehouse. What else do we have going? Do you have a website that people can uh, go No, to? no. My website is down. I had one a couple of years ago. Um, okay. I took, it, I took it down. I have to rework it because, you know, um, what, what I'm working on right now is a bilingual. Um, so let me just go into this. Um, you froze. Okay, let me look on my phone and see if he's frozen there as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so it's not necessarily just hip hop. It has house music. It has reggae music. It has spoken word. It has uh, Spanish hip hop. It has the style of music that the uh, of genres that I love to listen to. That I said it'll be cool to put this all into one one album. And then, okay. uh, and then a spoken word album that I also have in the process. That's going to be mainly all spoken word with a couple of music tracks in between just to key them in. And my biggest, my biggest um, thing that I'm working on is my own, my own book, um, a poetry book that I've been working on. You can say I, it's been in the works for 20 years because it's, it's taking poems that I wrote 20 years ago, mm -hmm. 10 years ago, and most recent. Okay. So that, that uh, it's, so the album's going to be called Wordsmith. It's the spoken word album. The uh, bilingual album is going to be called Evolution. Um, and then the book is going to be called Walking Cities of Light. Is there is there a, a timeline for uh, your, your book? The timeline is hopefully get it by next year. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I got it. I got it. I got it. I you got know, it. That, that, so the, the book, you know, the writing process is, is going good. The graphic design what's it, it it's it also in the process so it's just merging them both because uh it's not going to be just the regular book that you read and there's the poems mm -hmm. you know the designer that i'm working with i actually went to school with had a creative idea of how to get the words to stand out on that book okay. um so we're i'm 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 gonna i'm i isn't it's gonna be exciting to see what kind of graphics he brings into the book okay. um but okay. it's definitely it's definitely a book that if you want to get into my mind and see how complex it is, that book will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually found the video, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna see if we can get it up. I texted to uh, Melissa, who's doing it, who who does such a wonderful. I'm gonna shout out Melissa for a minute. She does such a wonderful job. We call backstage on on Streamyard, and I I actually could not uh, do this show without her assistance. So thank thank you thank you so much, Melissa. Uh, do you want to share while she's looking for the video? You want to share something short and sweet to for our oh, viewers? Yeah, yeah I, I'll I'll do a quick freestyle. Um, okay, so that way it doesn't go too long. Um, I'm in a place in my mind where it's hard to define. Words are characters, so sometimes it's sublime. Messages try to hit from the sparks of the tongue, but even then we like move through light. Even when we do run inside or outside, I'm trying to speak truth. But somewhere in there, I found out in my youth, like the fountain of youth, I dig so deep inside that I guess that's the reason that I really do rhyme. To see the heart, the drum of the boom, 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 the essence of why we go. That's why I speak to you, because I know that you're gold. Peace. Hey, hey, Daniel Vajegas. Yeah, man, I just, you know, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> you are good. You know. So what we're gonna do is uh we're gonna bring up uh the video before we you know say say goodbye here and let people just get a little touch of where you began um a little bit on this journey here. And uh do we we have the video, uh Melissa? I got I got a message said I got it. Here we go. Be different, Rednecks Poetry Squad.
if different is spelled D I F apostrophe R E N T. Correct. That's why we we couldn't find it because we was you know we were spelling different. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Different, totally you know, right. the, the traditional way. And uh, but I but I, I went on to take a look look at it. So so guys, look it up for sure. It's okay. We we tried, but um, let's post it to uh, the Facebook page. And so people can get a you know a taste taste of it as well. Daniel, uh, uh last words. Um, sometimes I ask people, you know, what is that thing um, that you want to leave to make the world a little bit better? Oh wow, that's a beautiful question. Um, if I could leave anything, it would be when people either hear my music or told about me, I would hope that it brings a motivation of why a person should never, ever, ever give up on themselves. Mm. That would be my biggest thing that I would love to be known for. Um, just that remembrance that, that we have so much value as a human being and um, that can never be forgotten. Amen to that brother. Daniel Vajegas, ladies and gentlemen, leading with autism. Thank you so much for being on the show. Um, I truly, truly appreciate you and, and honor your presence. So thank you. Coming up thank next you. month, we have Kix Capri on the uh, last Thursday of the month at 7 p.m. So join us once again for another episode of Leading with Autism. I'm your host, Poet Gold. Once again, I want to shout out Art Mitz Hudson uh, for co-producing this with me and uh, helping me with this vision and journey. So good night, everyone. Melissa, thank you so much for all that you do. <laughs>